Good morning, Dry Spot. A couple things here. There is Bible study this week, 6.30. It's not in the bulletin. Uh, and a couple other things. In September, when we, we're going to start communion every, every month, uh, plus the special days. First, first Sunday, yeah, first Sunday of the month. We will be using uh, gluten-free bread, too, all the time. And you saw one of the uh, uh, images up here about uh, we're collecting wheeled suitcases to be used by the homeless in New Jersey, so we will be collecting that. I uh, don't know of any other things other than if you're going to email, make sure you email to the, to the addresses listed in the bulletin there, this, to uh, Pam or Lori or Sandy. They have trouble with the, the other emails. Is there any other, are the other uh, messages to what I, okay. Just a minute, just a minute. We got a mic here for you. Um, when I came into church this morning, um, coming in this direction, there was about four cows on the other side of this house that are loose in the pasture there. So just be careful going out of church. They still might be there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, we'll start church with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. We welcome everyone to Dreiswalk Church this morning as we gather together to offer our praise and thanksgiving to God for the blessings we received and continue to receive through the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We invite the congregation to rise as you are able as we begin with our call to worship. Give praise to the Holy One at all times and bless their name. Let God's radiance pour out upon you and make you shine brightly in the presence of the Most High. O oh, experience and recognize the goodness of our God with all our senses and be glad in the safety of God. Um, would you pray with me this morning before we get started? Dear God, thank you for this beautiful morning you've given us. As we sing this song, may we reflect on the greatness and vastness of your mercy and love. Let our hearts be filled with gratitude and praise. In your name, amen. Please join with us in singing Mighty to Save.
Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our response, Come As You Are. You may be seated as we invite the children forward. Well, good morning. So we brought some friends with you. Who did you bring up with you today? Oh, an upside down baby. Yeah. And who did you bring with you? Bunny. A bunny, all right. Very good. So it's good to see you. Again, I'm outnumbered here. All these girls up here with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty exciting though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I want you to Look out there and tell me what you see. What do you see out there? The you see the sky way out there, yeah. And you see people. What else do we see? You see anything else? Yeah. Clouds there yeah. in the sky, yeah. So we see, but we see people out there. 
And what kind of people do we see out there? What kind of people do we see? You see mommy and Am, yeah? What other people do we see out there? Do you see some? Look over there. Yeah. Do you see Xander over there? Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's clapping, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we see some real little people and some big people. So we have people from all ages that are here with us. But what brings them all here today? Why are they here today? Yeah, they're here to learn about God because we're all God's children. And we come to church so that we can sing songs and we can hear readings from the Bible. You do like to sing lots of songs, I know. So this is a very special time for us to be here. So we sing, we listen to God's word, we pray together, we talk to each other. What are some of the things we talk about? You were telling me that you went to a princess tea yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, so that's pretty special. I don't know, do they have princes tea for princes or just for princesses? Just for princesses. No. So we're kind of left out again, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Do you like tea? Um, no. You don't like tea. I like tea. You did? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not good. Right. Do you like tea? Yeah. Yeah. Some do, some don't. That's probably true for all the people out there as well, right? So even though we're all people of God, we like different things, right? Yeah, we all like different things, and that's okay because God creates us all to be who we are, right? And who are you? Avery. That's right, you're Avery. And who are you? Avery. Yeah, and who are you? Yeah. And who are you? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, so um, God brings us all together. And one of the special ways that we share that we are God's children is we pray together. We pray a special prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and teaches us. So are we ready to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. Got, Got some goodies, goodies here. here. You are welcome. You are so welcome. Good morning. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who took to him are radiant. Their faces never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Our second scripture comes from Ephesians. Chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. 
Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must no longer steal, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant, fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends today's reading. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Thank you, Vern. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us and to all that you have made. We praise you for your creation and preservation, for keeping us and all things in your care, for all the blessings of life. Above all, we bless you for your immeasurable love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with thankful hearts, we continually and constantly praise you, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving ourselves to your service, and by living in your gifts of holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all worship and praise now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me Thus drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, 
Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The holy gospel of our Lord. Together let us profess our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hopefully everyone had a good breakfast this morning. And if not, maybe you'll go for brunch afterwards. But we have learned to feed ourselves. We have cookbooks everywhere. Our cupboards are full, hopefully. Our refrigerators and, and we, we know, know how to eat. Some, Some of us don't know when to stop eating, but we know how to eat. We know how to do a lot of things. We use what God has provided for us, and we use them in many different ways. And so we have to ask ourselves, do we still need God? Do we still need God? We seem to be sufficient in so many different ways. So the question an important one is, do we still need God? Do we still need God in our lives? And if so, how and why? Why do we need God in our lives? And how is our understanding of God in our lives expressed and what we say and what we do. We've been taught to be thankful for all that God has given us. We are taught to be thankful in the ways that we use and utilize all the things that God has given to us.
But how aware are we in our daily lives of the ways in which God chooses to be present to and for us? Do our lives and our relationships reflect our understanding of our need for God? And what is God able to do that we cannot do for ourselves? What is God able to do that we are not able to do for ourselves? Because I think that many times we think and believe that we can kind of get through day by day relying on ourselves, our own smarts, our own intuitions. And we've learned to rely on each other in our relationships with one another. But how aware are we minute by minute of our reliance upon God. What is God able to do for us that we cannot do for each other, for ourselves? We seem to be so technologically and scientifically advanced that we seem to be able to create life in ways that were unimaginable even 50 years ago. So do we still need God? Can God and does God provide for us in the ways that we cannot for each other. In today's gospel reading, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats from me, and whoever drinks from Jesus, will have life, eternal life. Jesus indicated that he's the bread of life that comes down from heaven. And people are drawn to Jesus because of the will of the Father. And yet that immediate response is, don't we know you, Jesus? We know where you come from. We know who your mom and dad are. How is it that you say these things to us? And how are we to process all those kind of things? You say you're the bread of life, but we ate breakfast this morning. Our bellies are full. And Jesus said, that he only does that which the Father enables him to do. And the will of the Father is to grant life and life beyond how we understand it. Life that is more than simply eating our vegetables. Life is more than simply using the kind of material things that God has given to us. So we ask, we ask ourselves as we come together as the church, as the body of Christ, we ask ourselves, how conscious and aware are we of that which God does and can provide that we cannot do for each other and for ourselves? We 
we come together because we believe. We believe in God. We believe in Jesus. We believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We believe that God has given us God's own spirit to help us in this life. But day to day, moment by moment, how much are we aware of God's presence? Do we look to God? Do we look to God when we seem to be in some kind of a bind and we need some help to get out of there? Or do we look to God and give God thanksgiving each and every moment for what we are able to do, for what we have? When Paul is writing his letter to the church in Ephesus, a church that was doing okay in many respects, but they seemed to have lost that sense that God is able to do that which we cannot do for ourselves. That God has come to us in Christ Jesus to provide safety and protection and awareness that goes beyond simply the material. That God is somehow present to us to give us something that we cannot give to ourselves. Throughout the church's history, churchgoers and theologians had many different expressions for that which we call eternal life. Sometimes they seem to be a contradiction to what we experience in this life. Jesus said that those who believe in him and trust in his ways will never die. And yet we live in a world in which death is all around us. Our lives are touched. Our lives are touched because we know that death is a reality in this world. So what could Jesus mean when he said those who believe in him will never die? Those who believe in him will be granted eternal life. We live sometimes in a world when we're a little bit like Thomas the disciple. Unless I see it, unless I can touch it and taste it and feel it, I'm not going to believe. Much of our daily lives are ordered around those material things in our lives. We taste, we touch, we see, we hear, we smell, we sense. But this gift of God through Christ Jesus seems to go beyond that. And so how do we find ways to express that? Well, Jesus said that the first way is to trust. To trust that what God has promised 
God will provide. To trust that when Jesus performs words of wisdom and touches people and brings healing upon them, that there are possibilities of life that seem to go beyond what we can sense. So we ask ourselves, do we still need God? We plant seeds and grain and we expect it to grow and we expect the fruit of our harvest to feed us. We expect that we have used some kind of human ingenuity to use all these kind of material things in our world to build shelter, to build our houses. We believe that all these things that are in our world we can use and use for us. And yet, and yet, we come to church and we profess that Jesus is our Lord and is our Savior. We have created the ability to use some of the material things that God has given to us to create life in Petri dishes. We've been able to use some of the gifts that God has given to us to create nuclear fission. We've used all these kind of things that God has given us in a sense to create life, but also find ways to harm each other. And we call that technology. We call that science. And we think that technology and science will get us where we want to get. We think that all these kind of expressions of human ingenuity that we are able to use in the lab will be able to improve life. But has it? Yes, we probably are able to have some conveniences that people did not have before in the history of humanity. And maybe, just maybe, we are able to live longer and more prosperous than people have before. But none of us, none of us here, none of us who are gathered here can provide anyone with life and life eternal. For all the good things that we are capable of doing, None of us can raise the dead. None of us can give that gift of life and life eternal. But because of that, we might need to take a step back or two and not simply focus on eternal life, but to create a new awareness of thanksgiving for the lives that we already have. Because we know that even with all the human ingenuity that we've enjoyed and expressed, sometimes it hasn't been used for good purposes. 
Sometimes all this human ingenuity has been used to create chaos and disorder, to exacerbate fear in our lives. So we have to ask ourselves, do we still need God? And if we answer yes, we still need God, what will that look like? What will that look like in the here and now? That is, what kind of faithful people will we be? When we're at the grocery store, or at Walmart, or wherever, at the playground, or at school, will people look at us and say, wow, those people love Jesus. Those people really understand the will of God. Those people really understand that only God can grant life and life eternal. So what what do we trust? I would venture to say, for much of our lives, we trust science and we trust technology and we trust those kind of ways that have made our material lives better and even more prosperous than maybe people were able to do years and years But in some ways, we're not any different than those people 2,000 years ago who heard Jesus say, I am the bread that has come down from heaven to grant life and life everlasting. And the reaction? Don't we know where you came from? Don't we know who your mom and dad are? Don't we know... The stuff that you've done? What can God do for us that we can't do ourselves or for each other? That's the question that has puzzled people of the church for 2,000 years. Because we wonder. We wonder, is it possible? Is it possible for us to live without the need of God? To live without the need for God in our lives? And a way to address that is maybe think back to yesterday. Just think back to yesterday. I know it's harder for us to go further than yesterday, but think back to yesterday. 24 hours of Saturday. How many times were you aware of God's presence? How many times were you aware of providing thanksgiving to God for you for your life and your family and your friends and your community. And how will that look today? How will that look after we leave church? Will we be conscious of God's presence? Will our trust be in the way of God and God's presence? And will we be able to look at each other and do whatever we have to do today, being constantly and continuously in awareness and in prayer of God's presence in our lives? One of the challenges for the church today, in the year 2024, is an increasing number of people throughout the world 
even though they believe in God, believe they can get by without God. That you can believe in God, but that you can also feel that you can get by without God, without that day-to-day awareness. Jesus said, I am the bread of life who has come down from heaven. Aware that we all need to eat, Aware that we all need to provide shelter. Aware of the need that we also need to care for one another. There's something beyond that. That only God through Christ Jesus can provide. And that is life and life everlasting. So whether you're eating a loaf of bread or Reese's peanut butter cup, or carrots, or whatever it might be. Whatever you might be doing, day in and day out, God, through Christ Jesus, is simply calling upon us to be aware of God's presence, to trust in God's promises, and to know that nothing shall be able to separate us from God's eternal love in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we invite the congregation to offer our joys and prayers and concerns before the church and with one another. a bunch today. Maybe we should put it a different way. How do you express your awareness of God's presence in your life right now? Maybe another way to ask that is, do you feel God's presence in your life right now? And what does that feel like? What does that look like? And how will God's promise be revealed in your life today? Let us pray. Almighty God, most gracious and merciful Father, we are here this morning because you have drawn us here to worship you, to honor and praise your name, to be aware of your presence, to trust in your promise, to be guided by your Spirit. 
continually make your presence known to us. In each and everything that we say and do. In all that happens around us. We thank you for giving us the ingenuity and the innovations to use those things that you have given to us to hopefully improve life in the here and now. And yet we know that you and you alone can provide that which is eternal, that which is everlasting. We know, gracious Lord, we know that you have given us the ability to thrive, for you have poured out an abundance of your love upon us. But sometimes we seem only to want to survive. But there's Joy in heaven, and joy amongst us, when we continually and constantly give praise to you in our words and in our actions. Help us to always be aware that we need you, even at those moments where we think and come to believe that we can do for ourselves that which is necessary. Surround us with your spirit. Guide us with your spirit. That we are constantly looking to you for our guidance, our direction, and our everlasting peace. We thank you for being a God who even in those moments when we seem to turn our back on you, you seem to provide light to bring new awareness of your presence in our lives and of your promise that brings salvation and life and life everlasting to us. It comes through the gift of healing, the gift of hope. We as the body of Christ offer our prayers and our petitions for those who are broken of body, spirit, and relationship. We offer our prayers this morning for Salisa, Salisa, Linda and Dolores, Jeff and Mary Lou, Brian and Cameron, Bill and Don, Jason and Joan, Tony and Joan, Cindy, and all others whom we name before you in our hearts. Where there is chaos and disorder, bring peace and abundance. Where there is despair, Bring about the repair that it brings us into the fullness of the hope that you have in us to trust in your ways, to follow in the steps of Jesus, to let your spirit speak through us so that our words and our actions will reflect your holy will. Be with your people throughout the world this day. 
so, so that, that as we proceed in time, a glimpse of the eternal will be expressed in that which we say and do. Help nations and peoples come together, not in disorder and not in war, but help us to use the gifts that you have given to us to feed the hungry, to welcome the stranger, to uplift the fallen, to bring hope to all. For this world that you have given to us is to be filled with your will, to be expressed in your hope. And we pray that all will come to know you and to know that we cannot do without you at any moment of our lives. May our attention and awareness be on you, in your presence, in your promise, and on the ways that you've revealed yourself to us through Christ Jesus our Lord, our Savior, and our eternal hope. In his name we pray. Amen. We invite the congregation to rise as you're able, as we sing there's a wideness in God's mercy. The prophet Isaiah prophesies, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, and he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us everlasting.